<clears throat> Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston. I'm coming to you, to you today with Monday's Daily Bible Study. I want to thank each of you for joining with me as we gather together to study and meditate on the Word of the Lord. We are coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. <clears throat> Our lesson for today, Reducing Gideon's Army. Reducing Gideon's Army. Come from Jude 7, verses 1 through 8. For any of you that are following me, this week's lesson brings us up to what we spoke on Sunday. Amen. And so as we go throughout the week, I will bring in lessons that will lead up to Sunday's lesson as it helps to enforce and make uh, the lesson for Sunday stronger and give more understanding into each lesson. Amen. Uh, our lesson is uh, coming from Jude 7 verses 1 through 8. But before we get started, we're going to have prayer. Then we're going to move right into the lesson. Amen. Dear God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you that you are wonderful. We thank you that you are our counselor. We thank you, Lord, that you are God Almighty, and beside you there is none other. We thank you that you are our everlasting Father and our Prince of Peace, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you is doing, you have done, and you shall do in each of our life. We give you all the glory and the honor, and we bless your holy name. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for all that you do in our life, showing us the way leading us and guide us in, in, in true path of righteousness. Lord, we give you the honor and glory. Lord, we uh, claim a healing protection over everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. There are many that's in, in pain and in discomfort, uh, either out of fear or out of uh, uh, hatred or discomfort. In this time, Lord Jesus, we bind all demons that is not like you in anyone's life that's under my voice in the name of Jesus, that it will be removed and taken out in the name of Jesus, that we will walk in your righteousness and not in our own uh, revenge and our own fear and our own uh, uh, life that is not of you. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor and we bless your holy name. You said by your stripes we are healed. And as you went through the seven uh, types of shedding your blood for our salvation, Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor and that each one of those take presidents in our life that we allow it to overshadow us and take over in our life lord we thank you heavenly father that when we are going through through anything in our life we should know that as you told Moses you are the I am I am the provider I am the bread of life I am the water of when you're thirsty I am everything that you need all we have to do is look up you know when we are saying many times Lord that we need to pray the prayer that will help us in the situation we are in the biggest thing that we need to look into, Lord, I ask that you open their eyes that they see and their ears that they hear and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high that they would look into your names as your names proclaim who you are to each one of us, that they will pray on those names and those names will give them strength, courage, and understanding to go forward and to continue in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we give you the honor and the glory and we bless your holy name in jesus name amen amen and amen all right <clears throat> we're gonna get ready and get started our lesson as we stated reducing gideon's army and my lesson is coming from Judges 7, verses 1 through 8. And the scripture lesson text read, Then Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose early and encamped beside the well of Horad. As we uh, do, if you do remember, uh, Gideon's name which was changed, were brought in or changed to, uh, thought of then, as a Jeroboam after uh, his father stood up for him when he tore down the altar and the Baal uh, uh, pole uh, and then gave a sacrifice unto God. Amen. So that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, 
the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me saying, my own hand has saved me. It was over 30 some thousand people so he did not want those them going out and to say that because we had 30 some thousand people we won the war. Amen. It said now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people saying whoever is fearful and afraid let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead and 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remain. But the Lord said unto, said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then I will be that, I've, that of whom I say to you, This one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whom I say to you, This one shall not go with you, the same shall not go with you. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees and drinks, and the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who, who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the people go, every man to his place. So the people took provisions and their uh, trumpets in their hands and he sent away all the rest of Israel every man to his tent and retained those 300 men now the camp of Midian was below him in the valley amen this is a great and powerful lesson I would like to say that my thoughts on this chapter, on this area right here, uh, has always, uh, when it comes to my mind, it brings me to a, 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 this, uh, a thought of that uh, when uh, Gideon uh, have the men to drink the water, that the one that got on their knees, their full attention was uh, devoted to drinking water. They were a army, a man in a battlefield. You're not to put your full attention on anything when you are in dangerous territory. And if it is your lifestyle, just because you're going out does not mean you have changed. That lifestyle is still with you. So as the Lord uh taught uh, uh, Gideon at this time that these are the ones we do not want to bring with us. We're going to leave them behind because they do not have the understanding of a man of battle. That when you're on the, on the battlefield, your, 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 your life is in your hand and you are to be watchful at all times. If you get down on your hands and knees and you got to get up and, to try to protect yourself, but if you are already up and just leaned over drinking a little water, then you will be uh, better off than the man that is all the way down on his knees and have to get up. Amen. So I've always believed that about that passage of spit, uh, scripture that the reason that God when he was uh, uh, getting uh, rid of so many of them was that in this he was uh, taking the one that would pay attention to what was going on. Amen. Commentary said, God provides that the praise of victory may be holy to himself by appointing only 300 men to be employed. Actively, activity and prudence go with dependence upon God for help in our lawful undertakings. When the Lord sees that men would overtake him and through unbelief would shrink from prayerless, perilous services or that through pride they would vault themselves against him he will set them aside and do his work by other instruments uh, pretense will be found by many for deserting the cause and escaping the cross but through a religious society may thus be made fewer in numbers yet it will gain as to purity and may expect an increased blessing from the Lord. God chooses to employ such as are hot only 
those that are not only well affected but zealously affected in a good thing they gr they grudge not at the liberty of the others who were dismissed in doing the duties required by God. We must not regard the forwardness or backwardness of others, nor what they do, but what God looks for, for at our hands. Amen. As uh, we know, uh, Jesus Christ, when he had resurrected and he was uh, walking and talking with John and P and Peter, and he and, and he told Peter, uh, uh, "Follow me." And he and he said, "You know, uh, th these are the things that you will undergo and under undertake." As he spoke to him, and he said, and then Peter turned around and says, uh, "What about this man?" He said, uh, "If I should say he is to tarry until I come." What is that to you? That has nothing to do with what I tell you to do. We are to look at what God is telling us to do, not what he's telling somebody else to do, and not worry about what somebody else has to do. Amen. Our job, our position, what God has brought us here for is specific to each one of us. And we are not to worry about and look into what somebody else is doing. Amen. It says he is a rare person who can in endure that others could excel him in gifts and blessing are in liberty so that we may say it is by the special grace of God that we regard what God says to us and not look at men that they do what they do amen this is a powerful and wonderful lesson teaching us to keep our eyes focused on God and not on what other men are doing amen this is a great and wonderful lesson I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day amen amen